each and every one of you being here. You all look pretty fantastic today, all masked up, and I can still see smiles underneath those masks. I know it because your eyes are telling us that you're in a happy place and that you're feeling really good today. When's the last time you said to yourself, I am a success? When's the last time you really spoke those words and maybe looking into a mirror or really addressed, I am a success? Well, join with me right now. Let's make sure you've heard those words by saying it together. Would you join with me? I am a success. I am a success. That's right. Let's begin to proclaim that over and over again. And then there are those who would say, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't know that I really feel like a success. You see, I made a lot of mistakes in life and I failed at a lot of things. And we have sometimes embraced this failure consciousness in the journey of our day-to-day -day living. But let me remind you that there are no failures in the universe. And that when this thought begins to rise up within you, you need to begin to proclaim, I am a success and proudly proclaim, there are no failures in the universe. There are no failures in the universe. You see, what we want to do is try to erase a failure mentality, a sense of that there is lack and loss and limitation, and that we're not good enough, we're not worthy in some way that we have failed achieving our highest and best. Now, we know that in traditional Christianity, many people have quoted over and over again, supporting a failure theory. All have sinned, all have failed. Everybody has come short of the glory of God. Quoting that scripture and trying to hold on to a failure consciousness and say, you failed, you failed, you failed, I failed, we've all failed. Oh, but let us understand that passage is not speaking a teaching of failure consciousness. Instead, it's simply teaching that there is no one any better than anyone else. We're all in this journey of life together. That's all. It's not saying that you need to claim a failure consciousness in any way or think that I am a failure or think in any way that the circumstances have brought about a failure to me and I have failed in doing my best. Because let me tell you this, there is just no failure in this universe. Now our actions may miss the mark but that missing the mark may simply be our greatest tool in learning how to hit the mark. You know how it is. An archer may pull back the bow, trying to release that arrow and hit the target, but when he misses the target a little bit off, well, he knows then it's time to adjust and he knows exactly what to do. So sometimes those places where we've missed the mark are simply great opportunities in helping us to achieve the mark even better. It's no failure. It's not a failure at all, but an opportunity to learn. For if one believes that you have failed at any time, say for instance, oh, I failed last year. Well, in that belief, you're likely to fail again this year because you're owning it, you're claiming it, you're speaking this to be your truth. I have failed, I have failed, and I will fail because that's my consciousness and that's what I'm holding in. So we wanna make sure that we are erasing this kind of thought. For whatever we put our mental energy into, whatever we put into that mental thinking, that energy becomes our reality. And whatever you're focusing on grows and it expands. And we certainly don't want to expand a failure consciousness. Instead, what we want to do is begin to erase that and remove it. Because we live in mind. We live in mind. Let me explain this. We have the ability to think and all of our thoughts are creative. So we live in the realm of mind and there is one mind and that mind is God. And we are part of that. That mind is in us. That mind of God is flowing through us. That intelligence of the divine is here for us. It is what has created us and we're created in that image. There is one mind and what we think of or what we hold consciousness can return to us only constantly what we're dwelling on, what we're thinking about, what we're embracing over and over again, it's going to return, it's going to bring back to us. It's going to manifest for our lives. So if you say, for instance, you're thinking, I'm poor, I'm in lack, I'm living in limitation, your mind has no choice other than to return that, to say, that's what you think, and so that's what you are. Because the scripture says, it's done unto you as you believe. It's done unto you. As you, so what are your thoughts? What are you believing? Do you believe you are a success? 
we better hold on to that and erase any kind of feelings of failure in our life's journey and claim, I am a success right here and now. We know that there can be no failure in God's mind because God's mind is my mind and this mind is the power upon which we are depending. There can be no failure in God's mind. There's no failure whatsoever, for we know that the world, what the world defines as failures, constantly saying it's a mistake, it's something bad, as can actually be that greatest gift. You know, years ago when I was a little younger, just a little younger, I uh, thought, you know what, it'd be great to be a flight attendant. And I thought, all oh, my friends are traveling, and I had many friends who were in the airline industry, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna join them, I'm gonna be a flight attendant. All my friends said, you'd be a great flight attendant. You're just really good with people and customer service, and oh, you'll have no problem being hired just like that. In fact, we're gonna do everything we can to help facilitate that, so we've called our friends in the hiring department and said, watch out for Paul Gretz's application. And when he comes through, make sure you know, because he's gonna be a great flight attendant. So I went to interview with airline number one, and unfortunately, when it came for that interview moment, someone else that hadn't been alerted to who I was picked up my resume and I went to a different room uh, to visit with that person, and they just felt like something wasn't right and said, thank you for coming, but you're not hired. So I went on to the next airline. And I went to the next airline thinking, you know what, I'm gonna be hired as a flight attendant with this airline, and it's gonna be great. And I had the opportunity to just uh, visit with them and more and more about my uh, language skills, and then I had a, a little understanding of French, and so they said, wonderful, we're looking for French speakers, come on board. I thought, great, I'm on my way to being hired. I walked into the next room for the interview, and she began to say, speak some French. And I said, well, honestly, I would like to s have a few weeks to just freshen up on it. Oh, no, I was just being honest, just saying, I was fluent enough certainly to answer those questions, but I wanted to be more proficient. And in my efforts to be so honest, uh, she said, I'm sorry, we can't use you. So there I went to airline number three. And at airline number three, I went through the process and I was so excited that this is my chance, this is my opportunity, and I got hired. And I thought, wonderful, I'm on my way to be a flight attendant. And the day I got hired, the airlines froze all new hires and said, I'm sorry, but we all new hires won't be called into work for maybe a year or more. Okay, I began to feel like, am I a failure? Am I a failure at this? But you know what? All of those experiences turned out to be for my greatest good because I wouldn't be here today as the senior minister of City of Light. I wouldn't have this opportunity to be the person that I am now and have this wonderful spiritual enrichment and experience that I'm living out on a day-to-day -day basis through the opportunity of pastoring. I wouldn't have that. So were any of those experiences a failure? Not at all. They were opportunities that were leading and guiding me into knowing for sure my true calling is here in ministry, not on the airlines. And I realized that there is no failure. Nothing was a failure moment. That which is the divine wants to meet that very need, but what is the need? Because you're saying this and going there, you're, you're going back and forth. You're saying, I want, but I don't have, and it's not possible, but it's possible. And so what happens in that process? We negate the word that we speak. Because the scripture tells us that when we speak the word, when we claim something, when we speak it out with an authority, that voice going forward, a proclamation, is going forward in such power, it will not return void. It's going to meet that need of what you believed and have spoken. You will receive just what you believe, but you've got to believe it in a sense of purity and clarity, not in a, a, wa a wavering faith. All, uh, all success and all things in my life, relationships, business and health and spiritual growth, well, they are uh, here to demonstrate and manifest some amazing things. And we must begin to proclaim that over and over again. Bring about our best life yet. We've got to clear up the thinking. We've got to make sure there is no error thought in the journey. For if our desire is success, then we want to make sure there's nothing that's counterproductive to that success. 
When Jesus said, resist not, what he was talking about, he meant non-recognition. Don't recognize it. Don't recognize evil. Resist not when he spoke about how we address the evil in our world. The only way to avoid it is to not recognize it. And so what we persist in recognizing, what happens is we persist in holding it in place. So that what you constantly acknowledge, constantly recognize, I recognize my failures. I recognize my shortcomings. I'm recognizing it over and over again. What happens is you begin to hold it. That's right, caress it, maybe even baby it, coddle it. And you're holding it in place in a way that then becomes more and more your reality. But when we resist, that means we don't recognize the failures, the evil, the challenges, the things that are going on in our world. We refuse to give it power. We refuse to allow it to take up space in our thoughts. Don't allow it to take up space. Don't allow it into your mind, but simply just refuse. That's the very power of Jesus's teaching of resist not. So this is how we erase any idea of failure. Number one, we simply don't address it. We simply don't recognize it. We simply don't entertain it. We don't give it space within our mind. Now, we're not hiding from the truth, but we are proclaiming the truth. Big difference there. We're not hiding from, oh, you know what? You have failed, you have big, you, you know, you've had some challenges, you've had some moments that you just really missed out and you're not really, we're not hiding from that. But instead we're proclaiming the real truth that the spirit dwells within and this spirit, which is God, never fails. God never fails. The God in you will never fail. So you can't say I'm a failure because there is the divine presence dwelling in you and it never fails. So we want to affirm over and over again and to block it out of our remembrance, any sense of lack or limitation or fear of failure, because there is no failure. That's right, there is no failure. It is a false thought and it has no truth in it. It's a belief in lack and there is no lack. That's right, there's no lack in this world. We live in a world of abundance. We live in a universe of unlimited possibilities. There is a God that is unfolding amazing opportunities for you here, right now, in this moment. There is no lack. Oh, but those who want to hold on to the belief in lack and want to see lack and not constantly view everything as being lack or limitation, for those that becomes their reality. It is simply that we need to release all of this from our consciousness. And what we want to do is speak a word of success and do it with a calm trust. I am a success because the divine power of God in me is always successful and always providing and always blessing. Do we understand that the scripture says, God's plans for you are to prosper. God's plans for you are for success in your journey of your life. So what we want to do is make sure that we really are speaking this truth. How many of you have said, it will never happen? How many of you have said words like, oh, I would like something, I hope for something, I wish for something, but it will never happen. You see, you change that thought to saying instead that it's happening now, happening now. Oh, I'd love to have a job, but it'll never happen. Oh, I'd love to have someone in my life. It'll never happen. Oh, I'd love to think about some opportunities for advancement within my uh, spiritual life, but it will never happen. Instead, it's happening now. That affirming power begins to move us from a feeling of any kind of sense of failure to now knowing I'm living out the highest and best. I'm living in my success. From Hebrews chapter three, verse 19, in the New Testament, we find this passage that's so thought provoking for us. It's a very story about the children of Israel and it's referencing with this phrase, they could not enter in. They couldn't come into the promised land. They couldn't enter in because of their unbelief, because they just couldn't believe. They were hindered, they were held back, 
their great moment of success and triumph was there available to them, but they couldn't go forward because they simply would not believe. They would not believe it's possible. They couldn't believe in the abundance of God providing for them. They couldn't believe all they could sense was, you know what? It's just too challenging to go into the promised land. There's too many obstacles. There's too many things ahead of us. We're just gonna stay here and dwell in this wilderness land. There's a beautiful passage in Psalm 78, 41. It says, they limited the whole one of Israel. Referring once again to those people who hold back the very blessings, the very hands of God, the very demonstrations of the divine within our life, they're limiting God because they're not willing to believe. They're not willing to believe that they're a success. Instead, they find it so easy to believe, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. I'm not good at it. Where there's lack, the world is failing me. There's all these circumstances around me that are proving over and over again uh, that I live a life of failure, but it's those thoughts that have limited the power, presence of blessing and the goodness of God in our life. Because our thoughts become the thing thought of. Our thoughts will become the thing thought of. What a man has and what he is is the result of the deeper state of mind, of the center of thinking, of the center of believing, what you are, what you have, all comes from that because the thought becomes the thing thought of. So if you want to know what someone really wants, let me tell you this. Look at what they have. They'll show what they really want. Look what they have. Because if they wanted something different, they would think differently. You know? We look around and say, well, you know, I live a modest life. I struggle. I have lots. Well, that's your thinking. You are where your, your thoughts have brought you. You are there because that's what you're thinking about and that's what's in, entertaining your thoughts and occupying space within your thought life. If you want something different, you begin to think differently. You begin to think, I erase, I eradicate these thoughts of failure. I am a success and I live that. From this moment forward, I speak it, I live it, I embrace it. That is how I journey in this world, knowing that I am a success. Because we can look at one another's life and say, hmm, you have what you have, you are where you are, because that's where your thoughts have taken you. So what we want to do is make sure that our thoughts are guided and directed towards the true desires of our life, because our thought, which is the key to our life, opens all the doors for us. That's right. You have a key. You have a master key that will open up every single door in the journey of your life if you use it. And that's the thought process of beginning to hold in mind with the power of believing. For as a man thinks, so he is. You will receive just as you believe. So let's begin to expect the best living and knowing that there is the very best for us. But where God is in this moment, in our life, within us, around us, for us, and through us at all times, there is success. God is not a God of failure. God never fails. So success is yours because God is in you, through you, around you at all times. There's not a spot where God's not. So everywhere you go, God is there. And that power, that presence is a presence of success in achieving the highest and best in your life. So today, I'm inviting you to embrace this mantra. Say it over and over again. Let's say it and proclaim it with me. I am a success. Let's do that. I am a success. I am a success. Because what you're proclaiming is the power of God is at work in you, unfolding the highest and best for you. Amen.